Today's students, we're going to study about the cattlemen of Polk County. We're going to study about how they lived, what they did, and the impact that they made on the economic growth of Polk County, of Central Florida, and eventually in the entire state. Molly, what is your question? How long have cattle been in Polk County? For almost 500 years, the cattle industry has contributed significantly to Florida's economy and natural resources. Cattle and horses were introduced to the continental United States by Ponce de Leon in 1521, when he made a landing on the west coast of Florida. On this expedition, he was mortally wounded by the Calusa warriors. The fate of the cattle and horses is unknown. In the 1600s, ranches surrounding Spanish missions in North America contained some 20,000 head of cattle. Native Americans learned to raise cattle from the Spanish and acquired their own herds. When Spain ceded Florida to England in 1763, the British introduced the English Longhorn. Escaped Spanish Andalusian cattle and English cattle mixed in the wilderness and became known as cracker cows. Weighing about 600 pounds, the cracker cow was tough enough to survive Florida's swamps and woodlands. By the 1960s, due to many years of introducing new breeds and crossbreeding with the Brahmin, Hereford, and Angus bulls, only a few examples of historic cracker cattle remained. Today in Florida, the vast majority of cattle are either Brahmin or some sort of Brahmin composite. Lily, what is your question? Who were the first ranchers in Polk County? The first ranchers in Polk County were the Seminole people. One reason for the Seminole Wars in Florida was control of the grazing lands and livestock. During the wars, the U.S. military captured and killed more Indian cattle than Seminoles in an effort to starve the tribe from Florida. The first ranchers of European descent moved into Polk County from Hillsborough County beginning about 1848. Perhaps the most recognized name in early Polk cattle history is Jacob Summerlin. It was said that Jacob could ride a horse and crack a whip when he was seven years old. With his father's encouragement, he began to build his own herd as a child. In 1844, with the family of his new bride, he drove his herd south to the area around present-day Plant City, Florida. He soon acquired 6,000 range cattle roaming the prairies east and south of Fort Meade. Within two decades, he became one of Florida's leading cattlemen, known by many as the King of the Crackers. With partner and sea captain James McKay, he followed the Spanish tradition of trade with Cuba. Summerlin and ten men would drive thousands of cattle over hundreds of miles down the Kissimmee River Valley to Punta Rosa, south of Fort Myers, for shipment. Along the route, cattle would be purchased for three to eight dollars a head and sold for ten to twelve dollars in Spanish gold. During the Civil War, he relocated to the area that would later become Bartow, purchased some 10,000 cattle in the area, and obtained a two-year contract to supply the Confederate States with beef for the military. In the 10-year period after the Civil War, an estimated 1.6 million head of cattle were sold to the Spanish in Cuba. Spanish gold boosted Florida's economy at a time when paper currency was virtually useless. Today, many Florida ranchers are cow-calf operations. Ranchers breed and raise calves for six to 12 months. When they reach about 400 pounds, they are auctioned and shipped out west, closer to the Corn Belt, where they grow to a finished size of around 1,100 pounds. Florida cattle producers are good stewards of the land. As owners and caretakers of thousands of acres of pristine native range and pasture land, multi-generational family ranches have cared for the land, provided employment for our residents, and contributed greatly to the local tax base. Jane, what is your question? 
How did the early Florida cowboys live? Early Florida cowmen should not be confused with the cowboys seen in western roundups and cattle drives on Hollywood movie sets. In the 19th century, the cattle drives started in March and lasted until August. Cow camps were scattered over the woodlands about one day apart. They consisted of crude shelters and log pens to gather wild cattle. The animals had to be flushed from the Florida palmetto scrubs and swamps with whips, dogs, and horses. The men who accomplished that difficult and dangerous task were known as cow hunters. Some people know how the term cracker originated from the cracking sound of the rawhide whips used by pioneer cattlemen. Thus, the original crackers were men who herded cows. When artist Frederick Remington visited Florida in the late 19th century, he produced several illustrations, including a cowman, or cow hunter, with his horse and dog. Remington described a rough and ragged lot that, in his opinion, did not compare with the dashing, romanticized cowboys of the West. They are picturesque in their unkempt, almost unearthly wildness. The first order for a 19th century cattleman's pioneer family settling in Polk was to locate water and build a shelter. Simple lean-tos were often the first shelter to be built. They were made of pine saplings with a palm frond roof which sloped front to back. Cabins were made from nearby trees which were felled, cut into logs, and knots to fit together. The roof was assembled with tightly thatched palm fronds. In time, hand-split shingles would replace the fronds. In these camps, the men and women had responsibilities. Men hunted and fished to provide sustenance for their families. Early pioneers lived off the land. Fathers and sons hunted in the surrounding woods for deer, panther, wild hog, bears, and turkey. They turned to the waterways to fish, capture bullfrogs, and soft-shelled turtles. Women were responsible for preparing food, making clothes, soap, candles, teaching, medical treatment. Water for drinking, cooking, and washing was obtained from nearby streams. Clothes were washed with homemade lye soap and boiled in wash pots. The rinse water was then used to bathe the family, wash the floors, and water the garden. Women planted gardens as soon as they were able, with staples such as sweet potatoes, corn, and sugarcane. The wilderness offered honey from beehives, swamp cabbage, wild Indian mustard, hookberry greens, wild oranges, blackberries, and huckleberries. In those days, your closest neighbor would be many miles away, so social occasions were rare. Relatives and neighbors looked forward to getting together to work and visit. Alex, what is your question? What was life like for the children of Polk County Pioneers? In the cow camps, Florida's pioneer children did not have as much time as children do today. Children were expected to help the adults with the work. They would often spend their days performing chores around the home in aid of their mothers and fathers. Boys would spend time with their fathers learning how to hunt, fish, and trap wild animals. Girls helped with the cooking, cleaning, mending, gathering eggs, and taking care of the younger children. There was work for the children, but also time for fun. With plenty of lakes and streams and poke, they could go swimming. Children played games like skipping rope, chasing hoops, and tag. The children did not have many toys, and most of them were homemade. Their mothers taught them to make corn husk dolls. Fathers taught their children how to carve things from wood. After a long day, the family might gather around a campfire and listen to a fiddler sing songs and dance. Taylor, your question. Can you recommend a good book for me to read? Nancy Dale, 
the legacy of the Florida pioneer cow hunters in their own words. The Florida pioneer cow hunters gave birth to the cattle industry. The legendary cow hunters made way for today's ranchers. This book is about the past and the future of ranching in Florida as a new generation takes over the reins. Readers will reflect upon the valuable lessons our ranchers reveal about history and survival.